as you boasted it in 2013. Matt, Patricia, what are your plans for the NFC North and the Lions? We have them right now live. Has process changed for you, or has it? Uh, through the years, through the, in the NFL, or maybe just, just in terms of this year, to you know, knowing that you have the sure. bigger role, you know, an yeah. overall evaluation role of, of offensive players, not just defensive. That's players. That's probably the biggest bit. part of it. It's just you know, um, spending the time on the on the you know the full picture of everybody. Um, not to say that I didn't, as a defensive coordinator, uh, spend time on offensive guys that were coming out because I did, just in case they were maybe guys that were targeted to be more high profile that you knew you were going to have to play against. So maybe it's a projection where quarterback, wide receiver coming out, or offensive lineman coming out that you knew might be in the realm of um, you know a pick against one of the teams that you were going to play. So you'd study those guys and make sure you really knew what they were as college players. Um, so that you had a head start on him before you got to the season. We've asked you about uh, Coach Belichick, Coach Pasqualoni. Wondering if I could go one step further back to that yeah, Amherst job. There you go, yeah. <laughs> uh, waiting for EJ to pop up. EJ or <laughs> Coach King, if you want to go back <laughs> right. to RPI, Coach, too. Coach though. Falstick. He's yeah, like, Don Falstick uh, is unbelievable. talked to him. He said he was waiting for the offensive coordinator job yeah, from you. But, yeah, uh, I'm sure I have a text message <laughs> on my phone somewhere. I was just curious what you learned at that stop yeah. with the sort of the start of your I career. mean, again, just, you know, all of it, you know, um, Really going back to Coach King uh, when I was at RPI and, and um, you know, the way that he ran the team, and very motivational to us, really, um, you know, played there and coached there, so it was kind of twofold, you know, a bunch of young guys and really a big influence from that standpoint of um, developing young men, you know, and that was kind of the first you know, experience I had where, you know, not high school where I saw my dad do it, but on the next level where you really could be influential in, in young people's lives and help them in those, I would say, what are really critical stages for, you know, young men and trying to figure out um, what they're going to do, what they're going to, you know, study or what they're going to be, you know, after school. So um, those relationships are, are still very close to me. Uh, Don Falstick, who I'm extremely close with still, he actually recruited me to go to uh, WPI. I, uh, coming out of out of high school, and then we both wound up at RPI for four years together there. So, um, again, you're just building on the relationships there and, and what's important. And I would say e EJ, when he um, you know hired me at Amherst, um, that was kind of my big probably culture shock into coaching full time. You know, I was doing engineering, which was great, but it was definitely. I want to say nine to five, but I mean, you know, you're you walk in, you sit in a cubicle, you walk out, and you know that's really it. And you know, you get in a situation there where uh, it's probably more where I heard the term, you know, grind, you know, grind it out, grinder, whatever EJ used to say, and and that's the truth. You get in. He was an early guy. He used to get up real early in the morning and be at work. Um, and just kind of push through the day. So that work ethic uh, that I learned from him early on has, you know, carried over also in, the, in to what I do now. How would you uh, characterize your your initial relationship with Mrs. Ford? Just as you spent more time around the family. Yeah, I've, she and her family have been unbelievable. Um, you know, and, and really, it's been since the moment uh, I stepped foot uh, in the facility. Um, I can't I can't thank her enough, and, and have told her repeatedly. Uh, just how, you know, the initial impression uh, that, and the way that they rolled out the red carpet for my family, my uh, my wife, you know, my kids, uh, my parents, my in-laws, uh, that goes a really it goes a long way for me, and just shows kind of you know uh, what just a first-class act everybody is, and how much love that there is in the building for the organization, the team, and all of it. So. Uh, she's been unbelievably awesome, so it's great to see her again, you know, here, because um, I don't get to see her every day, so uh, that's been it's been awesome. And I really, you know, I was, uh, the the session they had yesterday um, was one that I just, you know, I have an opportunity to hear her talk, and you know, it was something I wasn't at because we were in other meetings, but um, you know, that would have been phenomenal, you know, just to, to have. I love the history of the game, and um, you know, herself being such a huge part of the history of the game and you know being a you know an owner that's a woman I think that's unbelievable so um, you know just just really really blessed what else Star Wars we got tell me <laughs> tell us a little bit more about yourself I mean what you know when all this quiets down finally when you get a couple weeks to get away from football what, what will you do I'm gonna sleep that's gonna be number one <laughs> Very excited about that. Um, no, I'm just um, can't wait to just see my kids. Can't wait to really hang out with them, um, explore a little bit more of Michigan, which is nice. We were able to get up to uh, Legoland 
uh, the last time they were out, which was which was a blast. They had a they had a ball, um, so that'll be fun. Um, they're here, so I just I haven't you know even though they're here, I haven't seen them too much, but um, kind of enjoy a couple days with them before we go back to work. So I really just try to you know spend as much time with them as I can, and then um, you know see my friends as much as I can that I you know whether it's my college buddies or other coaches that I've worked with or my family. If I can get a chance to get back home. Uh, let me see what else about me. Uh, you know what? I do like. I do really enjoy reading, which is completely opposite of what I was as a young, uh, young person. Um, that's why math, science was much better than, you know, anything else for me. But um, I do. I actually really enjoy it. So um, try to read something during the spring or summer if I can um, when I get there. I don't have anything picked out yet. What sort of books do you like to read? All really all aspects. You know, um, you know it's great to le- you know read about leadership and team building and all that stuff. But um, sometimes you just like to totally spin on a different topic. Yeah. Which is, which is great. So, golfer at all? I'm not really a golfer. I mean, I kind of, you know, I can chase a ball around the golf course, but I'm not very good at it. <laughs> Try to keep score by how many balls I lose as opposed to how many strokes. So, it's probably, you know, guys are like eight under. I'm like, yeah, I lost 12. I'm good. So, um, what's, what's the last good book that you read? Non leadership or whatever. Last good book, um, non leadership. Could be a leadership book. I mean, it's a good. You know, one of the uh, one of the books I read that I'm, I'm fascinated with. Um, uh, it was called Legacy. Uh, it was about the New Zealand rugby team, the All Blacks. It's phenomenal, phenomenal team. So, uh, great organization. You can learn a lot from them. That's a really good one. Thanks. I don't know why the lights got bright. These guys like <laughs> turn this stuff on in here. Um, that's a good one. I like to read a lot of military books too. Um, you know, that's really fascinating to me. Um, Paul Brown, kind of in topic, but you know, just the innovations that he made in the game. Some of the things that he was able to. Uh, just change or you know fascinating it's all part of kind of the history of the game to me too so that was good thanks bill how did the uh, the kids handle the move especially like coming in the middle of great stuff from matt patricia there the book legacy available it's a Four stars out of five stars on Goodreads.com right now. Is that right? It was like a Christmas present from Bill Belichick. Yeah, maybe. It's about a rugby team. Come on. Or a Christmas assignment or you know, something like that. I, I, I gave that five stars what we just watched. Oh, yeah. Truly, I, there's, I don't know if there's a bigger wild card going into next season than Matt Patricia just because we have no idea what to expect. He, he talks different. He looks different. And all he's doing is jumping into a team that hasn't won a playoff game in almost 30 years, needs to win now, and is in one of the toughest divisions in football. This could be an incredible hire, or it could bomb. I don't know. There's a lot of mystery. Most of the time, these guys get the head coaching position. We know. You know, we know what they're about. Yeah. Matt Patricia, all he's been through in New England has been very on the second row. You know, he's yeah. behind the GOATs. So I don't think there's a team or a coach I'm more intrigued to watch next season than Matt Patricia. And you know what? Sean McVay has set the bar so high. Last year, having an amazing season his first time out as a head coach. And now every team is looking for that. They're trying to recreate the magic that they saw in L.A. Matt Patricia, extremely comfortable, though. Sitting up there, relaxed. He got the pencil in his ear. He got the black undershirt with the black shirt with the palm trees. Yeah, I think so. There's no palm trees in Boston or Detroit. No. But listen, there's no palm trees <laughs> in your mind. You're always on vacation. But I will say this, though. The pressure is on. There's... A lot of places in the league you can go to coach, and they'll just sit back and say, you know what, we'll expect, we'll give you, we'll take whatever you give us. We're not expecting much. But in Detroit, they've been waiting, and they've been thirsting for so long for postseason success that they want it right now. I feel like Patricia, maybe not that he's been hungry for it, but the fact that he's getting asked the kind of questions, like, well, yeah, we know you have an engineering degree. We know you're a genius. Mm-hmm. What book have you read recently? Yeah. What's your golf game look like? Those kind of questions. It's fun to get a peek at that. And I wonder, I'm, I'm with you on the wild sure. card. I don't know if it's going to be, you know, they say the Patriot way. He did bring LeGarrette Blunt with him. You have Vrabel down there in Tennessee clearly bringing those guys to bring the discipline, the, the badassery of what the Patriots stand for. But maybe Patricia opens up a little bit. We see the softer side, and that sort of translates to the way that he runs his team. We'll see. I hope so. Because you have characters on that squad. Big time. And in just, in just two minutes right there, he's talking about his kids, and I want to explore Michigan. We've been watching Matt Patricia feels like a decade. Yeah. Didn't know yeah. anything about I that. I worked up there two years. He never even said hi to me. So you didn't know that. And we yeah. watched it, and now he's the head coach. He's talking. My question is, when that guy, when training camp happens, okay, they open training camp, and the Detroit Lions, they sit down for the first meeting, the coach gets up there, and he gets yeah. up at that microphone. The veterans, the rookies, does he have that gravitas to reach right. them? If you're sitting there in, the, in those seats, Nate, are you like, hell yeah, that's my head coach, or I'm not sure? A lot of it comes with 
where he came from. It's the resume. Some coaches, they leave and go somewhere else, and you're not worried about their former team because their former team, quite frankly, wasn't good in the last couple of years. Now you got a coach coming from a place, an organization that's been good over the last decade. So he walks in, automatically you give him respect. Now when you open your mouth, what are you going to say and how are you going to back up those mm. words? But I'm glad you brought that up because that's a different type of pressure. People are expecting him to change this team. They don't just want this team to be better. People want to watch the Detroit Lions and say, okay, I see the championship quality that came over from New England. How do you bring that over? Because if you don't, if they don't have that, then what's the point of hiring them? Mm -hmm. And I, I believe that he's up to it. There's something about him where he's very confident in what he brings to the table. Kind of dressed like Alan from The Hangover. <laughs> One man oh. wolf pack. Same beard and everything. With the palm tree yeah. instead of wolf. Let's be blood brothers, me and yeah. Stafford. It's a great talk. Hashtag Jim, if you uh, we the are going to switch it up. Now, where should we go, guys? Let's go to Kyle Shanahan. Okay. Standing by my guy. Peter Schrager among the crowd. We will talk to him when we get back here on Good Morning Football, doing a tour of all the coaches at the breakfast out there in